Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash live via Skype. Uh, Jacob, uh, a Christian mother had a question considering uh, children can come to faith as age uh, as young as five or six. In the case of an adult, who would we counsel to be baptized immediately? How long should we wait before baptizing a believing child? And what is the age of accountability? Thank you for your question, and it is an important one. Let's begin with the age of accountability. That varies from individual to individual. If you are a parent to whom God has given a Down syndrome child, that child may never reach the age of accountability. Now, the Lord has placed a tremendous responsibility and a tremendous burden requiring a tremendous amount of love on you to parent a Down's child. But with that, with that burden, with that challenge, with that responsibility, he's also given you a blessing. You know that the Lord will not take that child's sin into account because they really don't know what they're doing. You are, in a sense, given a guarantee of that child's salvation that other people don't have. Whenever the Lord allows a cross like that, he helps you carry it. He gives a blessing that comes with it. Uh, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to say, but I would much rather have had a Down's child that I know is going to be with Jesus than to have a child who grows up in the truth, backslides, gets into the world, turns against Christ and dies outside of the faith and enters eternity under the judgment of God, I'd much rather be in your position. Now, that is not to make light of your position by any means. God bless you. May the Lord give you the grace and the strength and everything you need to love and take care of that Down's child. But in the end game, you're a winner. You're a assured winner. You're the horse that can't lose the race. The Lord does not take the sin into account. The age of accountability can vary. Some child's, one child will be younger than another. It varies. Now let's understand this even further. We see that God sent bears to devour children who were being wicked towards the prophet Elisha, tormenting an old man. Uh, they were obviously accountable. They were obviously accountable. There's also a sense in Scripture where there are ages of maturity, 20 being one. Somebody could not serve in the army of Israel until the age of 20 in Scripture. Jesus and David began their reign as kings or as public ministry of Jesus at, in the age of, of, of their 30s. There are significant ages. Bar Mitzvah age, 12, 13 being another. We see the Bar Mitzvah age of Jesus. It's about time I've been about my father's business. Rites of passage. Accountability is not all at once. It comes in stages. It comes in phases. But certainly by the time somebody is grown up, they should understand everything they need to understand. Remember, the boys were devoured by the bears. They knew what they were doing in that case was wrong. Okay. Well, let's go further with this now. Although the age of accountability can vary, children, particularly those who grow up in Christian families and have one, at least one Christian parent, may indeed be able to come to an understanding of their need for salvation and have a relationship with Jesus at a very young age, as you say, six or something like that. My daughter was six when she got baptized. 
Let's look at the second issue now. When a child grows up in a believing family, and the bedtime stories are always from the Bible, Mary and Martha and David and Goliath, and they go to Sunday school, and they sing, Yes, Jesus loves me, and he died for me, and they say, pray the sinner's prayer at the youth camp for the little kids and all that stuff. You cannot always say at what point the child was born again. You cannot always say. You can lead them to the Lord and say the prayer with them, and they can mean it, but they may have already been saved ahead of time. They may have already been saved by that time. When a little kid grows up in it, you can't always determine when second birth happens. It can happen quite naturally in a committed Christian family. But what you can put your finger on, the date, the time, the place you can put your finger on is baptism, the funeral, <laughs> okay, the funeral, the baptism. They can put their finger on that. Dead and buried, okay, believed and is baptized. Well, how long do you wait to bury a corpse? Once a child is old enough to understand the gospel, that they have sinned, that Jesus died in their place, that he was God who came to save them, and they have to ask him into their heart and ask him to save them and make them born again and empower them to live a holy life and give them his spirit. Once that happens, well, how long do you wait to, to have a funeral when somebody dies? If a child can understand those things, it won't be too long before they can understand baptism. This is a picture now, little Janie. This is a picture now, you know, little Frankie. When they go under the water, they're co-buried with him. When they come out, they're co-resurrected. You see, you don't have to worry about a funeral because when you go under, that's your funeral. You died with Jesus, but when you come out, you're a new creation that lives forever because of what Jesus did. You can explain it to little kids in those terms. You don't have to give them the sophisticated theology. You just have to let them understand the practical realities of death and burial. Those things can happen at the same age of salvation. How long do you wait to bury a corpse and to bring it up out of the water again? If they're old enough to understand the gospel and get saved, they're old enough to get baptized. They can understand the one, they can understand the second. There's no reason to delay it. Not only that, once they have been baptized, there's no reason to withhold the Lord's Supper from them. Do not give the Lord's Supper to unbaptized children, but once they have come to faith, they can become communicants. They're welcome to a place at the marriage supper of the Lamb, the same as all of us. They can take the Lord's Supper. You don't send them out. Let them be there and take the communion. Um, that's the scriptural principles. Those are the scriptural principles. Now, again, it's fine to pray with the child and lead them to Christ. And when you have a baptism for them, to go through it. Do you believe that Jesus died in your place? And tell me what Jesus means to you, Janie. Tell me what Jesus means to you, Reuben. And I'll tell you. Let them give their testimony. Don't intimidate them with a lot of adults around. Make it very nice, you know, and not, not intimidating. But ask them the questions. Let them testify. Make sure they understand it. Then do the baptism. That's the way it should be done. The complication is always going to be, one, we do not know the age of specific accountability. It can vary from child to child. And two, a child who grows up in a believing family may already be saved. They may already be born again. They may already have a relationship with Jesus. They just may not understand it doctrinally, 
or intellectually, but the relationship is there. We can't assume that they're not already believers. <laughs> they may have a relationship. But what you can do is take them through the ordinance of baptism and confirm it and affirm it in the presence of the church and the presence of the Lord and the devil and the witnesses and the world. Baptism becomes highly important in the case of a child growing up in a Christian family. I hope that helps sort out what is a rather important but also not uncomplicated question. And we do thank you for asking it. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Thank you.